Okay, thought I'd try something a little new, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to do a video about how to find God's grace. So, I did a map, which is pretty neat. Um, here's the color code. Blue is for repentance, red is belief in Jesus Christ, green is confess both, and yellow is call upon the name of the Lord. So, salvation. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 9. Okay. It's grace that saves you. God's grace is what saves you. Not your faith, not repentance, not confessing both in prayer, not calling upon the name of the Lord. Um, it does say you, it'll save you, but that's when God's grace comes on to you. You call upon the name of the Lord and say, save me, and God's grace comes on you. But the reason I did this video is there's been a lot of fighting against the true gospel. But something God showed me, if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, and I noticed something pretty interesting. We use this verse a lot and throw it at the lost people that believe in false gospels and everything, but we never truly read it and apply it to both saved and lost. Okay. Second Corinthians 4 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. At one time I was lost. At one time, if you're truly saved, brother and sister in Christ, you were lost. So if the gospel can be hid, that means it's got to be found. If something is hid, it can be found. So, does that mean there's a way to find God's grace? Yeah, there is. To find something that's hid, you would need, have to need instructions on how to find it. And that's what this is all about. Okay, And the center here... We have the three main uh, Gospels. Only one of them can be real or true. Only one of them can help you find God's grace, which is hid to those that are lost. Okay. Now, you have faith alone. You're saved by your faith through God's grace. We just read that you're saved by God's grace through faith. And you're going to find out it takes faith to do all these things. Repentance, and we're going to get down through it. Okay? You have faith alone, the true gospel, and you have works to be saved. Now, this is important. We're going to start with the first one, repentance. They skip the first directions. You're being led. Let's say you're being led to a buried treasure, okay? And you're given specific directions on how to get there, and there's no greater treasure than God's grace. I don't think anybody would fight me on that. So they skip the first one. And the first step is repentance. 2 Corinthians 7.10 For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Notice it says repentance to salvation. Repentance comes before salvation. Because when you're going to somewhere, like I'm going to the store, I'm not at the store, I'm going to the store. I'm hunting down that treasure. Okay? Now, Mark 2, 17, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? It takes faith and courage to do this. It takes faith to, to, in your heart, it takes faith and courage to say in your, that I'm no good. I'm a sinner on my way to hell. Lord, I'm so sorry for sinning you. To drop your pride and to drop your self-righteousness, it takes faith to do that. Okay? You're admitting to a God you can't see. You're having sorrow in your heart for sinning against a God you cannot see. It takes faith to repent. So the first direction, it's telling you to go forward. 
Okay, true gospel, we go forward, they skip it. Faith alone skips it, and works to be saved, they don't even do it. They're still in the same part. They're in the world. I put that there. Remember what the Bible says, that we are not, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. These people, when you're lost, you're of the world. You're of the world. You're of the world. They're still of the world because they skip repentance. Okay? Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That was the red one. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Okay? The gospel, see, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Okay? People always say that this is the gospel, and it is. The gospel is the second direction on how to find God's grace. First, there's repentance, and repentance leads to you believing and having faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You cannot believe truly believe in your heart in Jesus Christ, the finished work, if you haven't repented. Jesus said he came to save sinners, and he calls sinners to repentance. Okay? Now, saved, my phone went off, but it takes faith. So that's the second step. Now, does faith alone people do it? Absolutely, because people always get on to me. What's the gospel? You say the whole thing's gospel. No, I'm realizing we need to be saying the whole thing is the directions to find God's grace. Okay, you're saved by God's grace. Okay, it takes repentance to come to the gospel with a pure heart and pure faith in the finished work. Jesus died for your sins, but if you don't believe you're a sinner and that you deserve to go to hell, and that you've sinned against an almighty, righteous God that's going to judge you one day and having sorrow for sinning in your heart, you can never truly believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. When he said it is finished, he died for your sins. If you don't believe you're a sinner, then he didn't die for you. Oh, I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but I don't believe I'm a sinner and I don't have sorrow in my heart for sinning against God, then he didn't die for you. And that's this crowd over here, the faith alone crowd. He didn't die for them because they, they're not sinners. They don't want to repent. They're not sinners. So they do the second part, and it doesn't lead to God's grace. They end up still being of the world. They're not in the world and not of the world. They're still of the world. You want to find God's grace, you can't skip repentance. So you're told, go right. That's the next direction. Okay? The third step. I also left out John 3.16. I wanted to throw that in there real quick. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, 18, 19, 20. Nobody likes to keep going. They like to stop right there, and that's it. Okay? Notice it said that love is past tense, and you have to believe in Jesus Christ to have everlasting life. 17, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You want to be saved? You want to find God's grace? You cannot skip faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And these people over here that are works-based salvation, they claim to have faith, in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but they don't. Because the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, it is finished. There is no works to be saved. So they are of the world, and they don't even go anywhere. They're always going to be of the world, because they're bl believing in works to be saved. They're going to go to hell every time, because God's going to end up judging them according to their works. And if they've committed so much as one sin, they're worthy of hell. God's going to judge them according to the law. That's what it means to die in your sin. God's going to judge you according to the law at the great white throne judgment. You've sinned so much as once, you're going to hell. And this belief over here, whether they want to admit it or not. So we're going to keep reading. 
uh, we did uh, saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You cannot skip faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, which is the gospel. You come to that gospel through repentance. It also says in the Bible that you learn about the gospel through the written word of God. It's because of the written word of God you learn about repentance, that you're a sinner on your way to hell, and that you need Jesus Christ, the red line. 19, this is the number one reason why these guys over here at Faith Alone will skip repentance. They'll even skip confessing both in prayer. They skip calling on the name of the Lord to save you. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Hate it. They hate repentance because admitting they are a sinner means that after salvation there's going to be a changed life and they don't want that. They want to be able to continue in their sins and they want to be the judge of what is sin and what is not sin. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Now, you've followed this step, repentance, you've hung the right because that's the direction, okay? you've believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now the next step to find God's grace, okay, remember it can be hid to those that were lost. I was lost at once. You were lost at once, brothers and sisters in Christ. So it was hid, but someone told you the gospel. Someone told you the steps to find God's grace. So God would save you. Okay? God's the one that does the saving. Remember that. This doesn't save you. Repentance. Belief in the finished work of Jesus on the cross does not save you. It's God's grace. God does the saving. It's what God does, not what you do. It's what God did, you know, loved, past tense, in John 3.16. So we get to the next instructions on finding God's grace. Confess both in prayer. Romans 10.9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's why I keep saying, if you skip repentance, that belief is only in your head. It's not in your heart. Okay? And notice it says unto righteousness, not salvation, not finding God's grace, unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? People over here, faith alone, they're not realizing it, or they do, but they are ashamed. They are. Because they want to skip confessing both in prayer to God. That's why you do that, so you prove that you are not ashamed of the gospel. Red line. You have not skipped repentance, okay? You're not ashamed of the fact that you came broken, dropped your pride and self-righteousness, and admitted to God you're a sinner and had sorrow for sinning against God. You are not ashamed of it. But it says there, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Unto means you're going somewhere. You're not there yet, but you're going there. Which means it happens before salvation. Before God's grace and God saving you, it happens before. That's the third step. Okay? And these guys over here are ashamed of the gospel. It's in their head. Their belief is in their head. It's not in their heart. You're told where the treasure chest is. You're told it's got untold riches. There's no greater riches than God's grace. And these people over here aren't taking it seriously. They just want to believe what they want to believe. They want to keep their sin. They want to live however they want to live. They want to be the final authority. Not God's written word. Man is the final authority. Over here, they don't call, they're don't. they ashamed of the gospel also, the workspace. Like I said, they don't go anywhere. It's your works. 
They can say anything. They can say they believe in Jesus Christ, that they confessed Him in prayer. It doesn't mean squat to these people because it's your works that save you. They're of the world and they'll always remain of the world until they come over to the true gospel. The last part, you've got the chest and it's locked. Okay? God's grace is there. You've reached that point. But how is God going to give it to you? How are you going to open that lock? Call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay? Salvation. At the very end, you say, Lord, I've done these three things. Lord, will you save me? Lord, please save me. Okay? Someone said that asking means that it's not faith. Okay? It takes a lot of faith to ask God to save you. Why? Because you have faith that He can save you. You know in your heart and you believe in your heart that He can save you. If you have a car that's broken, there's something wrong with the engine, do you call an electrician? Do you call a plumber? A janitor? No, you call a mechanic because you believe he can look at it and tell you what's wrong with it and you hope, remember faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen? You hope he can fix it. It takes faith to call upon the name of the Lord to save you. These people don't have that faith. They don't want to call upon the name of the Lord to save them. That's workspace. Prayer is workspace. No, it isn't. It's not that at all. It takes faith to talk to a God you, don't, you can't see. Evidence of things not seen. It takes faith to call upon the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is how you find God's grace. These people, the gospel is hid to them that are lost. They'll never find God's grace because they won't follow the instruction God gave us in His perfect written word to find God's grace. Okay, I hope this helped you guys. This was something new that I was doing. And a lot of people have been fighting this. Okay, I want to be clear. The gospel is the red line. How do you come to the gospel? What position, what is your attitude supposed to be when you come to the gospel? Repentance, sorrow for sinning against God, admitting you're a sinner on your way to hell and you deserve to be in hell for sinning against an almighty God. That's how you come to the gospel. Then after the gospel, you show God that you're not ashamed of the gospel by confessing your repentance and your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross to the Lord. I'm not ashamed, Lord. I believe, I've repented, I believe, I'm not ashamed. And then you call upon the name of the Lord to save you. That's the faith. You're asking for God's grace. You're asking God to save you. And you know what? If you follow this, and God will check your heart, because repentance happens in the heart. It's not an action. It happens in the heart. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross happens in the heart, not the head, the heart. And then you confess both in prayer because you're not ashamed. And remember, repentance and confessing both in prayer come before God's grace, before salvation. You want to find God's grace? You want God to save you? Follow the instructions in the King James Bible. Don't be like this crowd over here. If you follow faith alone, you'll never find God's grace. If you're over here and works to be saved, You'll never find God's grace. You'll always be of the world. You don't want that. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go into the time of Jacob's trouble where God's going to be pouring out his wrath for seven years. You want God's grace. So I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I'm praying for you guys. Continue to pray for me. We're getting closer to the end, and it's getting tougher and tougher. Uh, we're getting closer to the catching away of the body of Christ. Bible word caught up. So I'll see you guys in the next video.